morning, everybody. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Let's everybody say hi to our North Campus. We have two campuses. Glad to be together again, worshiping God. Great worship. And uh, we're going to continue the series we started called Slaying the Dragon. If you're new, this ominous logo that rolled out, is that you know this dark theme is coming out of Revelation 12. And we've been looking at this scripture we're about to look at again this morning. And in this passage, we see the power, how God overcomes Satan for us, how we overcome evil. How many know that evil is real? And, and, and everybody, no matter where you are in your walk with God, no matter what your belief system is, you know, even if you don't have faith, a faith, you know there's evil. And so this is a need. We, we, we have a need to understand how to do this. And so I'm going to invite you, if you want to follow with me, to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12 has been our theme passage for this series. This is our third week now. And uh, let's start in verse 10, Revelation 12, 10. He says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Boy, I can't wait till that happens. And the, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Now, if you go a little bit earlier, which we're not going to do today, you'll see in Revelation 12, this is, this is Satan. This is the devil. And he's called the dragon. You know, that's a title, a metaphor, a symbol of Satan. So that's where we, we are, that's where we get this series title. He's been cast down, and they overcame him, they being us, the believers, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Now, <clears throat> we've been talking about these three things that we overcome Satan with. This is the tools God's given us. We talked about not loving our lives to the death. We talked about that two weeks ago. What does that actually mean? And the exchange that we have to make. If we want his life, we have to really give him our life. A lot of people struggle in the Christian life because they really haven't given up their life. They're still hanging on and trying to make their life work their way. And God, please help me do that. And it doesn't work that way. And then last week, we talked about the blood of the Lamb. So I want to focus on the third one today, the word of their testimony. What does that mean, the word of their testimony? Merriam-Webster defines testimony as an open acknowledgement, a public profession of religious experience. Now, I want you to notice the Bible does not say we overcome Satan by our testimony. In other words, just by our example. An example is important. It's very important. It's powerful. He says we overcome him by the word of our testimony. And we have to understand that word, that, that, that word is in there, you know. And, and what does it mean to have the word of our testimony? And I believe it means two things, okay? And this is what I want to talk about today. What does it mean, the word of our testimony? The first one is, is, uh, is the, we need to understand the power of testimony. You know, a lot of people are afraid to speak up or speak out because they don't understand the power of testimony. And there's, here's the two things that the testimony gives us. Number one, our testimony releases, your testimony releases your faith. You see, faith is really what we overcome with. But how does faith work? And if you look in the Bible, you see a lot of places where it says faith must be released. You know, uh, I, uh, I go on Facebook because I have to. And uh, that's how people, that's where people live, so I have to go there. And, and... <laughs> And so, you know how they do these reminders, you know, five years ago, this happened. Five years ago, you said this. Three years ago, you made a friend. I'm just trying to see what's going on today, and they make me go back and look. But, but uh, somebody quoted a sermon uh, I had a while back, and it said, faith is not something you have. Faith is something you use. So we, we try to get this feeling of faith, and then we feel confident. We don't have this feeling of faith. We don't feel confident. But there's something, faith is an action. It's an action verb, and it must be released. And, and the words of our mouth is one of the primary ways we release our faith. It's not the only way, but it's one of the primary ways. Uh, we say what we believe, but we have to keep saying it, listen now, to keep believing it. You start saying it because you believe it. But then you keep saying it. And as you keep saying it, you believe it even more. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13 is what Paul said. And since we have 
the same spirit of faith, according now, look at what it says, to what is written. This is where we're going to camp for just a minute. According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. You see the connection? I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So the first thing we need to understand about the power of testimony is that it is a way that God tells us to release our faith. What do you believe? And what is coming out of your mouth? And honestly, usually what we, what's coming out of our mouth is what we really believe. But if you want to believe differently, then start putting different things out of your mouth. And there's power in that. Amen. This is what God says. This is one of the big three tools that he's given us to overcome Satan is the word of our testimony. Amen. What, comes, what is meant to come out of our mouth? What does God want us to say? He wants us to speak the word of God. Amen. Ephesians 6, 17. And, the, and he, this is a warfare passage. This is how we overcome Satan. I'm helping you because I know many people right now have been going through some real spiritual battles. How many of you have been going through some spiritual battles? And I, I hear I hear the stories. We speak the word of God. And he says in Ephesians 6, he talks about the armor of God. And he says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the word of God is not just something that comforts us and it gives us instruction, which it does, but it's something that is powerful in the area of spiritual warfare. What battles are you fighting right now? What victories do you need to accomplish? Where do you need your faith to be? What do you need to see God do? Now, here's my next question. What scriptures have you found that are specific? It's not you just speaking out your opinion or your wish list. You know? But what does God say about that? And what are you doing with what God said about that? And what you're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be doing, is speaking what God's Word says. Amen. So I want to give you some examples. I don't know about you, but after I first got saved, and this is common, if this happens to you, I hope this encourages you, but you can give your heart to the Lord, you can have a powerful experience with God, and then doubt comes. That didn't really happen. You're not really. You know, you know, you know how do you know? How do you know if you're saved? Are you sure? You can't be. Look what you did yesterday. Remember how you lost your temper? Did Christians do that? And, and so I, I battled with doubt. And that's a big deal. You've got to figure this one out. Because <laughs> there's nothing more important than salvation. That, okay, I don't know if you got that. There's nothing more important than salvation. All right, thank you. I, I can move on now. So, so, I had to go look up and see what the Bible says about salvation. I was really saved, but I was doubting it. And that's what the enemy does. He's the accuser. Are you? Are you? Are you? You can't, you can't, you can't. What do you think? Who do you think? Who do you, you know, just this incessant accusation. And the only antidote we have to that is what God said. The only way to fight what Satan said is what God said. Right. What Satan says. And so I looked up Romans 10. This is a great one. It's very clear. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So how do you know if you're saved? Have you, met, have you confessed with your mouth Jesus as Lord of your life? Do you believe in your heart? Now I love what it says, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Because you act on what you believe in your heart. Okay, I've given my life to you, Lord. I believe this in my heart. I believe you are the, the living God. You are the Christ. You are the risen one. You're the source of my salvation. If you're struggling with doubt today, take hold of this. Take hold of it right now. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I would, I, would, I would have this doubt, and I would look up this scripture, and I would say, God, this is what your word says. God, I thank you. Lord, your word says, confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Lord, I thank you. Jesus is Lord. And as I said those words, faith came out. Faith got grounded again. Faith got stirred up inside of me. And I heard a pitiful little scream as my class one demon went into the distance. My afflicting spirit. Because there is no antidote to the word of God. 
That's why Satan hates it. He wants you to lean on your feelings. He wants you to lean on your traditions. He wants you to lean on your opinions. He wants you to lean on what your best friends say or what your uncle says or your aunt says or whatever. There's no power in that. When, Satan, when Jesus was attacked by Satan in the wilderness, he didn't say, now the rabbis say. And he said, well, you know, I've had some powerful experiences with Satan. Get away from me. He didn't, he didn't use any of that. And he, he was the son of God. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Financial provision. I know none of you ever struggle with doubt about this, but just in case this ever comes up, here's a couple of verses. Many of you know these. This is a famous verse because this is a famous problem. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How many know about that one? <laughs> There's no shame. Yeah, I know about that one. Okay, why do we need to know that? Because we get hit with doubt. We don't know about the future. We get hit with challenges, financial challenges. And what do you do when that happens? Lord, I thank you. See, guys, it doesn't matter just to think about it. It doesn't matter just to kind of, okay, I, okay, I'm, I'm assured with this. You need, to, you need to have the word of your testimony. God, I thank you that you said you will supply all my need. I mean, it, you may not feel any of that right now, but when you say it, Something happens. Something happens. Your spirit comes alive. And you give God, the Holy Spirit, something to work with. And you let death, Satan, the evil spirit, know where you are. He cannot, he cannot read your mind. He can only hear your words. You need to understand that. He is not omniscient like God is. Another one, because you say, well, aren't there any conditions? Yeah, you have to work hard. And, you know, you have to be faithful with what God's given you. But he will meet your needs. And then the Bible says we should honor him in, with the first fruits, the tithe. And this is, a, this is both a commandment, but notice this is a promise. Amen. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now, says the Lord of hosts. Now look at this. Try me, test me. That's pretty gutsy, right? I've said this to people. I said, I want you to obey God. I've had people come in for counseling and, you know, I'm not, I can't make ends meet. I said, are you tithing? Well, I, I want to. I said, listen, the Bible says prove God. So I'm going to say proving. And you come back three months later if it's not working. Well, Pastor, what if it doesn't work? Well, I believe it works. And I've never had anybody come back. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? How can it? So, so try me if I will not look at this, open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing there will not be room enough to receive. How many know the heavens are open this morning? There's rain coming out everywhere, <laughs> you know, physical rain. It's a sign of God's blessing. But see, that means, the, that, means the, that means, that doesn't mean you're just rolling in the dough and, you know, you're buying your luxury, everything. It just means that the heavens are open, that there's nothing stopping your supply no matter what happens in the economy, no matter what happens around you. You know what I'm saying? There's just a, the, nothing's going to shut off that supply. So I don't know how you do this, but I've done it in times of testing. God, I thank you, not because I'm righteous, not because I deserve this, but you said, and God, we have been tithing, and we thank you that you're going to open the winds of heaven. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. And we quote the word of God. This is just some examples that we deal with. Uh, fear of failure is a big one. It's a big issue. I think it... I think it uh, I think it cripples us out here in East Texas. This is not a bold, adventurous uh, part of the country, <laughs> you know. And, and, and people are afraid to take risk. People play it safe out here. And, and, and they live quiet lives of desperation as a result. And, they, and, and Christians can do the same thing. We're afraid to step out. We're afraid to trust God. People, there's people that want to do things, maybe start a business or or, or, or get involved in serving or in ministry. Or, but there's a fear of failure com, comes back. Some, some people want to get married and they're single, you know, and they're afraid they'll mess up. And I understand all that fear, you know, growing up the way I grew up. But what does God say about this? And he has a lot to say about it. In fact, there's someone that said over 365 places in the Bible where God says, fear not. One for every day of the year, knowing this is our issue, fear <laughs> You know, and this is a famous one, but this just to show you how this works. Second Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want to encourage you to, in the moment of testing, to, 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 to quote that. And, and a lot of times we think fear is like, well, I'm just, 
I'm not afraid. I'm not feeling all afraid. But are you engaging the way you should be engaging? Are you stepping out? Are you living? Are you holding back? The Bible says, if anyone draws back, my soul will have no pleasure. Are you stepping into the future? Are you stepping into God's will for you? Are you doing what you know God wants you to do? Are you walking to the edge of the light He's given you? Can I just urge you in this, sec- in this area, don't miss the adventure that God has meant your life to be. How many enjoy watching a movie where you know the ending? A few of you. I understand. If it's really good, I'll watch it again, but it's got to be really good. Well, God doesn't want you to live that dull life either. That's a dull movie, and He doesn't want you to live a dull life. He wants you, you don't have to know the ending. You just have to know who holds the ending and just step into it. And when fear, not if, when fear comes, you say, God, I thank you. And this is what I want, I hope you're doing. Just say, I thank you, God. You have not given me. You have to personalize it. You have not given me a spirit of fear. I do not have a spirit of fear. And that's not the whole verse. But I have the spirit of power. God, you have given me power. I have the spirit of love. God, you have given me love for that person. You have given me love. <laughs> Claim it. It's a spirit. How many of you found love coming up where you didn't expect it to happen? And it was God. You knew it was God. And you have given me a spirit of a sound mind. I'm not crazy. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) If you fear you're crazy, it's a good one, right? (laughs) But where where are we afraid? What are we afraid? What holds us back when we're afraid to take the step we believe we should be taking? We don't think we'll have the ability. We don't think we'll have the love and compassion we should have. And we don't think we'll have the wisdom we need. And he just covered all three of this in this verse. And this is written to Timothy by Paul. Timothy was Paul's young protege. He was brilliant. He was virtuous. He was godly. But he was young and he was intimidated. And God had him uh, lead a church that, um, people much older than him. And I've been in that situation in my ministry past. And I had got real familiar with this verse. And it's a great verse. And it's just, there's so many like this. I promise you, whatever you're going through, God has written some promises about it. And he wants you not to just hope they're true and not just in your brain say, okay, I believe the word of God. What are you doing about it? And what you're supposed to do about it, yes, act on it. But before you act on it, speak it. Learn to speak the word of God. It's so powerful. And the enemy hates it. They overcome him by the word of their testimony. That's the first use of the power of testimony. Here's the second reason testimony is powerful. And that is our testimony, your testimony identifies you. It identifies you. A lot of people want to be believers. They just don't want to go public. So we go and we, we go to church and we pray prayers. The preacher says, pray, pray, pray. All right, now fill out a card. No, mm, about that. Come on down. I don't have to do that. Well, I will someday when I'm ready. Well, what do you, how do you know when you're ready? I don't know. I'll be ready. I'll just know. You know, and... and there has to be a moment where you go public. It's like, a, it's like getting married. You got to go public at some point. It's like, well, we're just waiting to what, huh, to what, what time? And she's over there giving you the dirty look, you know. <laughs> and what we do now is we, got to be honest here, we just, we just play house. We don't get married. We're just going to make sure we're compatible. Well, how long you guys been living together? About four years. And that's real, guys. It's what happens. The vast majority of people think now they have to live together before they can be sure. Let me tell you why that's a recipe for disaster and why 62% of people who live together, people who live together before they get married have a 62% higher chance divorce why because it's not reality 
And I know, I know, you, you know, if you want to do this, you, you're going to think you know better. You're disagreeing with me, some of you, right now. But I promise you, it's what the stats say. It's what God's word says. When you get married, here's God's order of oneness. Spirit. We're, we're, three part, we're a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. It's another trinity out there. So we are spirits living in a body. So you've got to make sure your spirits are compatible. What's that? Fellowship and worship. Don't get married to somebody hoping you can get them to your church later. You know, you're not one. You're not one in, this, in the most fundamental area of your life, which is spirit. You can't worship together. When I got married, listen, I didn't want just a Christian gal. I want a spirit-filled Christian gal. That's what I wanted because I was spirit-filled. I'm going to walk around in my house praying in the spirit. I don't want her looking at me weird, you know. That was one of my, you know, that was for real. <laughs> I saw cute little gals before, but that we weren't one spiritually, you know? And then soul, your, your, your personalities, your desires, your passions, your, your goals. And then body, that's when you finally move in, all right? If you get body before soul, you've disrupted the process. There, the science has proven there is a physical connection. There is an emotional connection that happens through one night of being together. And it's hard to break that. And there's people walking around with all broken up because they've violated God's order. And if you've done that, then, then, then ask God to forgive you and get it right and get it right now. Because there's no substitute for doing it God's way. We can't improve on God's way. And we have to go public. At some point, if you're going to live for Jesus, you've got to go public. I don't mean get up here or have an article in the newspaper. But I'm just saying, be willing to stand up and, 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 and identify yourself as a Christian. You know, nothing works until you commit to it. You see, God says commit to it. Now, here's the, here's the thing. I believe this is the heart of what God wants to say today to some of you. Commit to it. Listen now. And then you'll figure out how to make it work. I just want to make sure I know. Listen, I get that. I'm that guy. Before I buy something, I will read, I will read myself crazy about it. Especially if it costs over a hundred bucks. You know? I'm just gonna go like nerd on it, you know. I'll download the manual before I buy it, you know. And it just can get crazy, right? And so, yes, you want to learn and make sure that your heart is ready to make a commitment, whether it's marriage or to a job or to a career or to a study, field of study, and certainly, 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 certainly to, to Jesus. The Bible says count the cost. But counting the cost doesn't mean that you know you got everything it takes. It means counting the cost means you know you're willing to do whatever it takes. That's a big difference. That is a huge difference. And when you come to that point where you're willing to do whatever it takes, guess what's going to happen? You're going to figure it out. You're going to learn. You're going to read. You're going to get people around you. You're going to grow. You're going to learn to overcome. Amen. You don't overcome and then commit. You commit and you learn to overcome. That's why God says we overcome through the power of our testament. Because initially, I'm just going to tell you straight up, if you're considering making Jesus the Lord of your life, initially, you're going to get more resistance. Who wants? Who's with me? <laughs> so, right? so the enemy is going to come after you harder. But now you've gone public. And you have to learn to fight. And you have to learn what the Bible says. You're not going to learn, you're not going to, you're not going to learn how to win until you get in the battle. So you get in the game, man. And when you get out there and you make a commitment and you go for it, and, and here's what you need to do. You need to shut the back door. Right. We have a society of everybody leaving the back door open. Right. I think I'm ready, but just in case. Donna made me destroy my little black book. She made me destroy it. I'm just joking. I didn't have one. She goes, yeah, you wish, you know. I did good, guys. 39 years this year. This year. Woo! Love that girl. I think we're going to make it. What do you think? So here's the thing. That's the power of testimony. The power of testimony is you, you stick your neck out. You go, man, I'm going for it. I'm going to follow Jesus. And, 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 and when you do that, then you learn 
how to win. You learn all these promises I gave you. You're not going to know them beforehand. But now you know them now because you need them. And that's how it works. And that's the power. We overcome him by the testimony. Uh, water baptism is a form of testimony. It's more than a form of testimony. It is a burial. And I want to say, if you have been, if you have given your life to Jesus and you have not been water baptized since you've given your life to Jesus, you should probably be water baptized. Because it's a burial. And you can't bury something that hasn't died. So I got baptized when I was 16. I, I prayed a prayer in a church and I came down. But I really didn't give my heart. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't really saved looking back. And I got water baptized that night. Nobody told me what to do. I, I mean, what I meant, what, what it was about. I just did it. Then two years later I got saved. And then I got water baptized again. Because I had really died then. I would really given my heart to the Lord. There had been a real death. And there needed to be a real burial. And that's what water baptism is. It's a real burial. So water baptism is, is another form of testimony. And again, people hold back. They're afraid. They're afraid to fill out a card. They're afraid to come down. They're afraid to get water baptized. Because what if I'm not ready? What if I'm not ready? Being ready is a decision you make. It's not knowing everything. It's not having everything in your life together. That's like getting healthy before you go see the doctor. That's, that's not how it works. And so these are, these are testimonies that when we speak them, when we say them, when we stand up, when we declare them, this is how we defeat the enemy. Amen. You go for it. You say, you're not. You see, until you, if you're afraid to make a commitment, you're still being governed by fear. And listen, as long as you're governed by fear, Satan still has you. That's where he wants you. You think you're being cautious. You think you're being wise. You think the timing just isn't right. Just keep listening to those lies. And the enemy still has you. You want to break his power? Learn the power of your testimony. Learn the power of going public. Go for it. Go for it. Here's what I want to close with. This is, I love this verse. As I was studying, I came across this. And it tells, me, it tells me something about our God. Let me tell you something about our God. Our God is a God of testimony. You need to know that about God. He is a God of testimony. He has testified to us. He has given statements to us. Jesus went public for us. And we need to go public for Him. 1 John 5, 9, if we receive, you can't just argue, you just can't argue with the brilliance of this. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his son. Whoever believes in the son of God has the testimony within himself. That's the power. See, when you go public and you face your fears and you step out and you say, God, I'm going to do your will. I'm going to give my life to you. There's all this fear. There's all these doubts. The enemy may still come and occasionally bombard you afterwards, but you don't quit. You don't turn around. And all of a sudden inside of you, there's this testimony. This is real. This is real. I'm different. God is real. I've been risen. I have been risen from the grave. I know he rose because I rose. I'm different. I'm no longer dead. I'm alive. There's a testimony. I know that if I died right now, I know. I don't hope. I know that I would wake up in heaven. I would be there. I know it. This is what gave the fearlessness to the early Christians. Who does that? Who gives, their life to, who gives up their life at a, at a young age? As has happened to millions of Christians across the ages. Only people who know. They know. They have this testimony within themselves because they believe. Here, here's how it starts. They believe the testimony of God. They believe what is written. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son, love this, has life. Hallelujah. It's not apart from Him. It's with Him. It's not, okay, God, give me your life. I'll go try it for a while. And then if it works, I'll come back and say, come on in. Let's get married. It doesn't work that way. When you want, if you want his life, get him. It comes with him. Amen. But if you got him, you got life, real life, eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. So everyone here, every one of us, 
we're going to believe somebody's testimony. We're going to believe our own. We're going to believe the world's. We're going to believe our friends. We're going to believe, or we're going to believe God. It's not hard for me to have faith because I know his testimony is more reliable than anyone else's, including my own. You say, well, you know, this, my story is really bad, but his story is really good. So believe his story. And let his story become your story. Believe his testimony. But we're going to believe something. Well, I can't have faith. You do have faith. But what do you have faith in? Who do you have faith in? Do you have faith in yourself? Or do you have faith in the living God? I have faith in the living God. How about you? Now, how many of you today, how many of you today want to experience the power of testimony in your life? How many of you want, how many of you today want to say to God, Lord, I believe your testimony. I'm going to fully identify with what you said. How many of you want his, his testimony to be your testimony? How many of you want that to be your story? If that's your story, if that's what you want to be your story, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Just stand together. Let's stand. In both campuses, let's just stand together. Let's just go to God in prayer and let's just tell him, God, I believe your testimony. I believe what you wrote about your son Jesus. God, I believe what you put in the word of God. I believe what you put in the Bible. I believe you, Jesus. Put, just say it. Just say it. Just say it. Take the power of testimony, the word of your testimony. Put it to practice right now. What do you believe? In whom do you believe? Speak that right now. Speak it right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed, but speak that out. Speak that out. Speak that out. Put the power of his testimony to work for you. God, I believe you. There's something powerful when you say those words. I believe you, God. I believe what you said in your word. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe you died for me. I believe, God, that you have come to bring me life. I believe that your life is better than my life. That your way is better than my way. As the heavens are higher than the earth, your ways are higher than mine and your word is higher than mine. And your word is higher than the words of all men put together. There's no one like you, God. There's no one like you. Who do you believe? Right now, I just sense it in my heart. Some people are struggling. You've been challenged. You've been struggling. You've been fighting. You feel like you've been losing. Who do you believe today? Who do you believe? Do you believe yourself? Do you believe the world? Or do you believe God? Say what you believe right now. Lord, I believe you. If you believe it, tell him. Praise you, God. Some of you today, the Lord, I believe, shows me you need to go public with Jesus. You need to put that power to work in your life. It's, you start with private declarations, but ultimately, at some point, you have to make a public declaration. At some point, if you believe it, you, you act on it. If you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you say, God, I know today that I need to make a public profession of my faith in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you really believe that, you need to do that. You haven't done it. You've never really done it. Or you, maybe you did it a long time ago, but you walked away from God, and now you're coming back. And you just need to say, I know I need to do that. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Pull all over the congregation, just raise your hand. I know I need to do this. God bless you. God bless you. I know I need to do this. I've been, I've been walking with God, but I, I, I need to do it. Or maybe you've been walking with God for a while, but you've never made it public. Come on, guys. Raise your hand. I want to pray. God will help you do it. Hold your hand up. Some of you today said, I've made Jesus Lord of my life, but since then I've not, I've not been water baptized. That's my need. Lift your hand. I want to see that if you're here today. All right, I'm going to ask every one of you that raised your hand to quickly step out. If you're ready to go public, come now. Come beat me at the altar on both campuses. Amen, both campuses. Come right down to the center. Let's give them a hand as they come. Come on, God bless you. God bless you. Come on down, come on down. Listen, it's okay, guys. Come on down. Who else? I don't care if there's just one, right over here, right over here. You raised your hand or wanted to, who else? I don't want you to miss this opportunity. Let me tell you what happens when you close the back door. You see, I think, well, I'm just keep, I just want to make sure I'm ready. The critters get in when the back door's open. 
I don't want my back. I close my doors at night. I don't want raccoons and skunks and snakes. I caught a lizard in my house yesterday. I don't want lizards coming in my house. Let's quit. Let's close the back door. That's what I do does. It closes the back door. Pastor Mike Park, come on down here. And Pastor, let's just pray for these precious people. You know, and some of you guys have been walking with the Lord a while. I get it. But you know what? Maybe today is like, I, don't, I need to do this. And can I just say congratulations and thank you and honor you. God bless you. I know you love Jesus. Not here to embarrass anybody. I don't know about you, man. I was nervous when I got married. I was excited, but I was a little scared. I mean, come on, look at her. Woo. Intimidated. Can I do this? Can I be this guy? <laughs> but there's, listen, whatever it is, commit to it. And the chains will break that holds you back. The chains will break. Father, we thank you for these, this, this, uh, this, these people who are making this commitment. We just bless them in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that you're going to empower them to take their next step. And we look forward to their future in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Go with Pastor Mike for just a minute. God bless you. Our prayer team is going to come. And we always love to make prayer available. If you're a guest with us or if you're a member of many years, we love you. We're glad you're here. And we'd love if you want somebody just to stand with you and pray with you, we, we would consider an honor to do so. And don't leave here with a heavy heart. Allow God to bless you and meet your needs right here. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a great day and stay safe in the land of